2012. This is uh, my first honorable mention. Um, the Hunger Games, Hunger Games, the first entry in the Hunger Games um, series. I had read the books or listened to the books and they were really good. I liked them. And you know, after Harry Potter, I was wanting another really good YA series to sink my teeth into or let's say my ears into. And the Hunger Games did not disappoint. When the movies came out, um, I was I was really happy when they announced they were going to make an adaptation of it and went to go see the movie with my kids and my folks. And I really liked it. I thought it was a very good adaptation. Um, I feel like Jennifer Lawrence's performance was, was good. Everybody else in here was really good. Um, obviously, you know, it's a dystopian world that's been created. So there is the, certainly this, this um, underlying sense of seriousness and, and danger, which, um, you know, is, is compelling to me. I like it when those types of things are, you know, interwoven into stories because it gives you a real sense of conflict and urgency to what's going on and um, your concern for the characters. So anyway, yeah, I like this. I felt like it was really good. Okay, next honorable mention. The Dark Knight Rises. I don't like this movie as much as The Dark Knight. Out of the three Batman, um, the Nolan Batman trilogy movies, The Dark Knight is, in my opinion, the absolute best. I like the other two. I don't know if I could say equally. I'm not sure really how I compare this one with the first one. I really like this one. There were some there were some parts in there that were kind of silly, ridiculous. The the, the Batman Catwoman kiss scene at the end when he's getting ready to go off with the bomb. I thought that was just like, okay, there's no time for that, you know. And <laughs> time the clock's ticking. Stop it. But you know, silly little things like that. Um, overall, I really, really liked this movie. I felt like it was a satisfying conclusion to the trilogy. I love Tom Hardy's performance. I feel like he was perfect in this part as Bane. And so, yeah, so there's that one. Okay, next one, obviously the Avengers. You know, this was the moment we'd been waiting for from the time Iron Man came out in 2008, and then you had Incredible Hulk, and then you had Thor and then the Avengers. I believe those were the three that led up to the Avengers. And I remember when it first came out, when there was even talk of it, and it just felt like it was gonna be ages until an actual Avengers movie brought everybody together. And nope, finally it came and there we were. And uh, of course in this movie, uh, Mark Ruffalo replaced, um, what's his name? Oh shoot. You know, the guy who played him in the other movie, the original MCU movie, Edward Norton. That's the guy. Um, it was okay. It was an all right switch. I feel like Mark Ruffalo has done a pretty decent job at this. And he, I prefer to watch some of his, I mean, Edward Norton has never really been an actor that's done a whole lot for me as far as like, he's just not that inspiring to watch. Um, so I wasn't really uh, heartbroken at the, uh, at the, at the switch or anything. I mean, I wouldn't have minded if he'd stayed, but it didn't really bother me too much that, um, that, that the switch happened. So yeah, fun movie. Obviously, yes, it's in my DVD collection. It's not my top, though. Um, just for whatever reason, it's not my top. Maybe when I see the top one again and I'm reminded. <laughs> let me look at my paper. Mm, okay, yeah, I know why it's not my top. Okay, next honorable mention. Looper. Um, I had forgotten about this one completely. I had to be reminded of it when I went back looking for certain movies with a particular theme, time travel type movies, which I love. And so Looper came out this year. I didn't see it until 2013, but I really enjoyed this film. I felt like um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt did a, a great job impersonating uh, Bruce Willis, the little kid that was in here, the crazy kid he's like had all these crazy powers. That kid was scary looking when he went all like, you know, full crazy. Anyway, I liked it. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen it. Oh my goodness, years. I feel like I should watch it again. Um, some of these movies, I feel like maybe my perception of them or my feeling about them might change if I rewatch them. But right for right now, for purposes of this list, this is just my instinctive reaction to how I feel about them right now. A year or two down the line, maybe this list would change. But um, for now, this is what it is. So let's move on to number one. Number one, Skyfall. I didn't see this until early 2013 when I was sick to death with the flu. And I love this movie. I like the James Bond franchise, but I'm not like super, super into it. Um, uh, 
And I was never really crazy about Daniel Craig. He's okay. Um, never really been super crazy about all of them uh, or any of them. It's just, he's all right, you know. But Skyfall was the first James Bond movie since maybe From Russia With Love that I was like super into. Like I was just captivated from the moment it started until the moment it ended. It just really had me like, oh my goodness. So for that reason, um, this particular movie was pretty momentous for me. And so that's why it made my number one for 2012. So let's move on to 2013. 2013, first honorable mention, Man of Steel. The first time I watched it, I liked it, but I wasn't like, oh, I really, really liked it. But it's grown on me, and I really am digging Henry Cavill as Superman. I have always felt like he was a really, really good choice. Um, he's, I mean, he's, uh, he's got the body for it. He's got the face for it. He's got the nice hair and everything. He's a good actor. And so I had to put this on my honorable mention list just because of that and in fact i feel like i should watch this one again too ever since i watched witcher i'm like oh want to watch everything with henry cavill in it again <laughs> so i really liked witcher that was a good show okay moving on arnold schwarzenegger the last stand this was the first movie that arnold made when he um quit well like the the first movie with him as the main actor that he worked on after he was not governor of California anymore. And, you know, not all of Arnold's movies have been, you know, all that great. Um, certainly I like more, some better than others, but The Last Stand for me for that particular year was 2013. That's my, my fave one, well, not my favorite Arnold, but one of my favorites for the year. So that's why I had to put it on the honorable mention. Um, it was just a fun time, typical Arnold movie. He's a cop trying to stop this drug guy um, that's going to be racing through his town to try to make a beeline for Mexico to get away from the authorities. So yeah, fun movie. And that's another one I should watch again. But I actually saw that one not too long ago, um, maybe a year or so ago. So maybe I'll hit some of the other ones on this list before I get back to this one. Okay, next one. Okay, Star Trek Into Darkness. One of the main reasons that this makes my honorable mention is because, well, I liked, I like Benedict Cumberbatch. And so when I found out he was going to be in this movie, I was um, excited about that. So I know there was some, um, at the time that when I first started watching it, I didn't know who he was supposed to be. So then when it was revealed that he was Khan, I was like, mm. I don't like it when they change things up too much. Like when you've got an established character that is, you know, a certain race or, or, you know, gender, sex, whatever. And then they go and they switch it up dramatically. I'm not a fan of that. But this still, uh, and, and I'm not a fan of the fact that they did that, but because he's in here and because I like him and I have liked the new Star Trek movies, you know, pretty well. This is why it makes my honorable mention for 2013. Moving on. Of course, the next entry in the Hunger Games um, movie series, Catching Fire. Second entry, uh, they took the third book and they split it up into two movies, which I feel like they didn't really have to do, but they did it, you know, got to make that money. Anyway, another good entry. Not much more to say about this one. Moving on. World War Z is, I do believe, my last honorable mention for 2013 until we get to my top one. I like this movie. I There were a lot of problems that apparently were uh, was going on with this during production and everything. And I did not listen to the book for this until after I had seen the movie. This is completely different from the book. But in my opinion, that's not really a bad thing. The book, the one that I listened to, I don't think there's been another one. I just listened to, there was just one I thought. It just basically followed stories of different people. It was like an anthology type thing. But this one takes one character and follows him throughout his, you know, journey of, you know, navigating through this horrible thing that's happening. But he's a scientist, so he's also trying to figure out a cure. So there's a lot of globe hopping going on and a lot of tense moments. And I really like this. The zombies in here were scary. They were not sluggish or slow. They ran like a like a sprinter at the Olympics. Very scary. 
So, but a lot of fun to watch. Okay, so my favorite movie for 2013 was this one, Tom Cruise in Oblivion. This also happens to be my favorite Tom Cruise movie out of all of them. I like a lot of his movies, but this is my favorite. It was just the cinematography, the score, the acting. It was it was kind of mysterious because you don't really know exactly what's going on in the beginning until it's, you know, revealed at the end. You find out and then there's these different things that happen. You know, I think I think I actually spoiled this in one of my other videos when I brought it up for whatever reason. Sorry about that. I won't spoil it here, but this is just a really great movie. And it has been a little while since I've seen it, and I feel like I would like to watch it again. This is getting me in the mood to watch all these movies again. <laughs> so yes, that's my number one for 2013. Moving on to 2014.